Back in 1982, General Consumer Electronics released the Vectrex, one of the most unique consoles to ever hit the market. With its signature buzzing sound and built-in 9-inch monitor, the Vectrex was in a league of its own. But the video game crash of 1983 and lack of support ultimately doomed the system. It's a shame the Vectrex didn't last long. This is a really cool system, and the technologies it had were groundbreaking at the time in the video game industry. And it all started with a big idea from a small company. The Vectrex began as an idea with Western Technologies, also known as Smith Engineering. This company was known for their Microvision handheld, the first handheld gaming system to use cartridges. It was revolutionary at the time, and the company wanted to expand further into the video game market. Western Technologies had purchased a surplus of small monitors. John Ross and Mike Purvis had the idea to develop a console with these monitors. Their vision was a mini arcade, a way to bring the sounds and visuals of the arcade home to the player. They brought their idea to Jay Smith, president of the company. Rather than use standard pixel graphics that most consoles used at the time, Western Technologies incorporated vector line graphics. The idea was perfect for the system. Home televisions didn't use vector technology, so including the monitor with the console not only allowed them to incorporate the graphics, it also allowed players to play their favorite games without hogging up the television. You bet your asteroids! Several arcade games used vector graphics at the time, such as Asteroids and Battlezone. After initial testing, Western Technologies decided to pitch their new console to the market. General Consumer Electronics, known as GCE for short, took an interest in the mini arcade. After making slight modifications, such as increasing the size of the monitor, a deal was made and the mini arcade officially became known as the Vectrex. However, GCE was not ready to release it just yet. They wanted to really market the system, but they needed more money and support from stores. During this time, Western Technologies developed game watches, and GCE manufactured and released them. The watches, Game Time, Sports Time, and Arcade Time, were popular with kids. These game watches were pretty cool. The Arcade Time and Sports Time watches actually had a small joystick on them, and the sound could be turned off as well, allowing kids to play secretly during school. Game watches were popular and produced much needed revenue for GCE, as well as getting stores to carry their products. Finally, the Vectrex was ready to be unleashed to the public. GCE premiered the console at the Consumer Electronics Show in June of 1982 with positive feedback. The system was released later that year in November, with a retail price of $199. So here it is, the Vectrex. This system was so unique in that it was all-inclusive. Even the controller is packed into it. The only thing you have to do is plug it in. At the top of the system is a grip handle, so you could take it on the go. On the back was a knob that could adjust the brightness of the monitor. The front contains the monitor and the controller as well. Behind the controller bay is the sound slash power switch, reset button, and extra controller port. Turn it on and voila! The Vectrex. Notice the boot up screen. Vectrex was one of the first systems to have this. One limitation of the Vectrex was color. The graphics were black and white, so to compensate, GCE used overlays, just like the Magnavox Odyssey. There were clips in front of the monitor for these. Also included in the Vectrex was a game. That's right, a game was built into the system. Mindstorm, an asteroid clone, would play if no cartridge was inserted. Now let's take a look at some of the titles for Vectrex. The library of the Vectrex was very small. Only about 28 or so games were officially released.
After its initial release, reviews and sales of the system were good, and things were looking up for GCE and the Vectrex. But within just two years, the system was discontinued. What happened to the Vectrex? Unfortunately, the Vectrex became a victim of the video game crash of 1983. After sales and reviews were strong, Milton Bradley took an interest in the system. GCE needed more funding for the system, while Milton Bradley wanted to get into the video game market. The two companies struck a deal, and Milton Bradley purchased General Consumer Electronics. This allowed the Vectrex to be sold in Europe. Bandai was given the license to sell the Vectrex in Japan as well. Along with their game library, the Vectrex had a few revolutionary accessories as well. The first was a light pen. This accessory plugged into the controller port and allowed players to draw on the Vectrex screen. However, only three games were released to support the pen. The second accessory, and probably the most interesting, is the 3D Imager. This device gave the player a 3D display. This was the first incarnation of 3D video gaming. Only three games supported the device, but it came out several years before the Sega Scope 3D. The 3D Imager was released in 1984, the final year of the Vectrex, and was only sold in the United States. The Vectrex only lasted two years, and it failed for a variety of reasons. For one, it was an expensive system to produce. Second, the amount of systems available to players at the time was huge. Vectrex was lost in a sea of other consoles. While the Vectrex technology was unique, many gamers were turned off by the lack of color. The developers toyed with developing a color version of the system, but the cost was too high. The Vectrex game library also lacked third-party support. Every single game released for the Vectrex was developed by GCE. Milton Bradley ended up losing millions of dollars, and the company was eventually purchased by Hasbro. Despite the system dying in 1984 in the United States, the Vectrex did remain popular in Europe, due in large part to families only having one television. In 1988, Western Technologies was interested in bringing the Vectrex back, this time as a handheld system. But with the impending release of the Game Boy, the idea was scrapped. Eventually, all Vectrex properties were put into public domain. Despite its end due to the video game crash, the Vectrex has a very loyal following, and games are still being developed for the system. Today, it's pretty hard to find, going for about $200 on eBay. But if you have the opportunity to pick one up, it's well worth it. There really is nothing like the Vectrex.